Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Disney having a hard time booking this galactic star cruiser. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine that as we head into a recession. Or that people have been pointing out this whole time that it was going to be a hard sell for so many reasons. So there is word from, what was it, WDW News Today mm -hmm. that uh, they are cutting cast member hours, that they're having a problem booking this thing. We've heard reports that they were trying to give rooms away. Yeah, that, that gets brought up in their article as well, but, but they're talking from a travel agent standpoint, but I think it was Drunk 3PO was saying that he had been hearing cast members were given the option to buy an extremely reduced package to get in and make the rooms like they're filled. I think, but that, I think that demands running out as well. It's almost as if, it's almost as if, uh, you know, certain YouTubers saying that this thing was way overpriced, mm -hmm. uh, way too repetitive. And the wrong uh, part of the of the, the Star Wars trilogy based on franchise. The, based on the wrong Star Wars trilogy. Yep. And uh, that it was going to be a one and done for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And within the first couple of months, it was going to drop off a cliff once everyone who was willing to do it or could afford to do it had already done it. And here we are. Here we are yeah. already. I mean, we're talking what, like? So, it opened in March, I think. Yeah, so we're talking... It's like seven or eight months out. Oh, my God. Not even a year. Wow. Okay. And we are, you know, again, uh, going into a recession. And, uh, you know, people are complaining about regular Disney vacations being too expensive. And then you talk about this, uh, you know, five to $6,000 luxury experience. People are having trouble just buying basic necessities because the prices have gone up so much, but the, but the pay rates have not. There's no way in hell that a lot of people could afford, yeah, the Disney trip alone, let alone the Galactic Star Cruiser, which, by the way, is like $6,000 starting price for four people for two days, less than two days. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, over 280,000 subs. Woo! Uh, thank you so much for the support. We do talk about Disney. Go out to Pirates and Princesses. Dot net for objective Disney news. You don't find a lot of that out there, but uh, WDW News Today has actually been objective for years. Mm -hmm. So I got to give them a, a hat tip for sure. They've been kind of following the situation. They are not on Disney's approved media list, so they can say whatever the heck they want mm -hmm. these days. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, this isn't good. So tell me what's going on here. Okay, so... First of all, I want to point out that the capacity for the hotel is not that large to begin with. WDW News Today talked about the breakdown. If you go to their blog, their article real quick, they talk go they go down here. They talk about the breakdown of what kind of rooms here they have. 100 guest rooms, including 94 standard cabins that sleep up to five, four galaxy class suites that sleep up to four, and two grand cabin suites that sleep up sleep up to eight. That's a lot of sounds. Um, the maximum capacity is 502 people. Okay. Right. But that being said, they're hearing that the some of the recent upcoming reservations only have 128 people. That's like 25 percent of what they can it can hold. Yeah, that's that's not good. And again, we said this would happen. Um, not to be like I told you so, but we no, said we like you told you so. We said what would happen with it is you're going to have a lot of influencers and a lot of uh, wealthy Star Wars fans and just people that have entirely too much money uh, do it for the first you know, a couple of months. And then after that was going to drop off a cliff. We've seen that the bookings have been way down. Well, I have the bookings down. on my article, but they're pointing out too, like, yeah, like you said, it, for most families, one, it's, it's, a, it's a big ask for what it mm. is. Two, you, you do it one and done. I don't care how many times Disney tries to argue that, oh, you can do like, you know, choose your own adventure so you can do different, you know, combinations. Bullshit. You already did the big things. Everybody gets to do the big things, even if you, you choose to be a different kind of, you know, the Empire or the Rebellion. Yeah, the First the Order, thing. I'm sorry. You already, the wow factor's gone. It's like Rise of the Resistance. I mean, a lot of people like the, the attraction. 
We've wrote, written it, like, I've written it twice. You've written it once. And after you kind of, it's still cool, I guess, but after you know what's going to happen, it's kind of like, you know, it's not as impressive. If if everything is working, too. That's, That's true. And half the time, it's not working. And you, you wait in line for how long, you, you you know, to ride this thing, and half the time, the effects aren't working. And the, the brakes. Am, it breaks down. The animatronics aren't working. We were there last. We waited in the line an extra hour because it went down. And then... Uh, I can tell you it was in the B mode. We didn't have the animatronic for Kylo Ren. There's no, there was no lightsaber coming through the ceiling. It was just like some kind of sparks flying, and that was it. Yeah. There was a bunch. The cannons weren't firing. Like usually the cannons, they they they, they recoil and yeah. they fire. They were just stationary. Okay. I that, mean, all things that made it cool weren't even working. Yeah, that's a pretty basic. That's a pretty basic mechanical thing. And the, the thing is, is that we had an Imagineer come to us before they even opened it. And said this thing is going to be a disaster on the down low because it's got too many things that can break, and it's uh, it's really ambitious. But he's like everything has to be firing on all cylinders all the time. They weren't given like, enough time. Yeah, and he said that they rushed it out, and he's he's like it's not gonna it's not gonna work. It's gonna break down all the damn time. People told us we were negative that we were you know just distant Disney, and we didn't know what the hell we we're talking about. And here we are. Uh, how long has it been up? About year two years. 2019 was it three? So about three years. About three years now, and the damn thing's down. 2020. I don't remember. 2019, I believe. Yeah, so it's about three years. I don't remember. They all blend together. But that's just you know that that's that that's not that's off topic. But we're just saying that you're not. It's not as impressive after you've seen it once, and that's how this is with the hotel. It's just not going to be as impressive after you've done it once. And for most people, it's a one and done. And there isn't anything really exciting to bring people back to do it again. I'm gonna be honest. There is nothing really exciting at Galaxy's Edge to bring people back again and again because Galaxy's Edge, the, the Falcon ride, walking through the Falcon is cool, but the the, the attraction itself is balls, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Rise of the Resistance is meh. If it was based on original trilogy, I, I might ride it again. But I, I do like the walkers, though. The walkers are cool. Walkers are my favorite things, and they have big walkers. <laughs> and again, though, that kind of... They could overlay... Rise of the Resistance very easily to be like an indoor based attraction mm -hmm. because they've, they've got original trilogy walkers in it. It wouldn't take much switch out some ammo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are lots of things you could do with it. So they might have been thinking that and same with the Falcon. Like the stuff they actually built physical props for could be repurposed pretty easily. But um, overall, I'm not impressed with Galaxy's Edge. I mean, I don't even like. It looks like a rock and flea market. It does. I always it, say that, but that's what it looks like. It doesn't feel like Star Wars. It does not feel like Star Wars. We were it, promised all kinds of aliens and droids and all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, you have that on the one side. And then on the other side, you have the Galactic Star Cruiser, which also doesn't feel like Star Wars because it feels more like Star Trek. It's very pristine. It's very, yeah. you know, sharp. Oh, because it's supposed to be refurbished. And I'm like, but they don't, they don't, it doesn't feel, I mean, I would say Galaxy's Edge feels more Star Wars than the Galactic Star Cruiser, personally. But, yeah. um, Anyway, so they're talking about how because of the, the lack of demand, it's creating an issue for cast members. Because if you don't have that many people, they usually run like two dinner services, you know, and they're only running one now because the, during these times. And so there's so much people who work there that can't get their hours. Um, and they were talking about uh, how like I think people were like 10 servers are doing like the whole floor now and they have like 12 people each and they usually they usually cover more people than that. Yeah. But they're just trying to keep them giving them their hours. But there isn't the, the demand. And it doesn't look like that's going to change any time soon. Yeah. Here. Our dinner service for 128 guests is reportedly run with just 10 servers. Each server will be responsible for approximately 12 guests each, which is two to three times less than a normal evening. Uh, and they were just doing casting not that long ago for parts. Yeah, I was I was wondering about that. They were they were basically recasting the whole thing, as or I understand. Backups, you know. Or is it just everybody's quitting because they're like, I'm not getting enough hours, or they didn't want to pay for union people? I don't know. I, you know, that wouldn't surprise me at all. With the entertainers, they they probably are a union, and they probably don't want to pay union. Well, so yeah, here, go back to my article for a minute. If you go to the bottom, I have a screenshot of what the here's okay. Here's the current. Uh, the availability calendar. Now we're like on, we're on the fifth, so it's crossed off because that would be the return of one cruise. The next cruise should start the sixth. As you can see, it is a very much for Thanksgiving week. It is wide open, and the same for December. Other than, and even Christmas is open. Other than like you know, these, and these have been the same for the most part. It hasn't really changed much. 
I think there's more dates available in November than there were, but December is pretty much about the same as it was last time we talked about it. And going to next year, it's wide open. No one's going. Um, it's just not booking up. And I think it's, an, it's, yeah, it's a number of things. I think one, it's, it's too expensive. Yeah. I think two, it's, it's Disney's trilogy and people don't want it, don't really care. And it was very divisive and people are burnt out on Star Wars. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it, it's, just, you know, one and done type thing. And a lot of people just aren't into it. It's very niche. And very people, a lot of people aren't into it and for the expense. And I think people are just tired of Disney and don't want to give them their money. Yeah, there, there are a lot of factors here, guys. I mean, this was, God, it was such a bonehead. I am really surprised. And I've said it before, I'm really surprised they went ahead with the Galactic Star Cruiser as is because they had time to cancel it or rethink it. I am surprised they didn't just say, hey, you know what? Let's go back to the drawing board with this one and turn it into like a dinner theater or no, something. No, because or... they're 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 so up their own asses. They honestly thought that it was going to be a gangbusters filled all the time because they're trying to ch- chase after people with money. Yeah, and they're like, well, this is inexpensive because you know they get millions of dollars in bonuses to them. It looks like a bargain, but to most people with the recession coming and just basic needs going up in price, they can't justify it for less than two days. Yeah, so here they talk more about giving giving it away. I mean, this is uh... oh yeah, they were saying that like, they're bringing in travel. Agents. Yeah, they said despite generally positive reactions, some strong criticism did persist, including the box truck transport to Batu in a six thousand dollar price point. That was all over the media. Everybody, not just mm-hmm. us. Uh, there have been enough vacancies on recent Galactic Star Cruiser voyages that Walt Disney World hosted travel agents for a free three day, two night experience. So they're giving the rooms away. Mm-hmm. Since our last report, no more dates have sold out. Right. And then they said that, that, that they keep bringing in like travel agents and stuff in. They're giving free cruises and, you know, that to them because they give them the cruise line, too, mm-hmm. so they can go promote it. And like I said, uh, I think it was John Freepio had said that he was hearing cast members were saying that that when the rooms aren't filled up, they give a steep de- discount to them that they yes. can go. Well, like I said, that demand only lasts so long. You know, I just don't think it's going to do well. And But now it's going to affect people's jobs, which I don't want to see. But I think $6,000 is a big flipping ask. Yeah, especially now, especially. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was ridiculous before. If you've got six thousand dollars to burn on two days of Star Wars LARPing, like you should be solving world hunger. I know the only way it's going to I can see that this demand, lack of demand changing is they start offering things like they do with Disney Cruise Lines, like they're oh, doing a Christmas cruise and, you know, Life Day or Halloween or a special event cruise. There's a probably do something for May the 4th or something like yeah. that. That, you know, might bring up demand, but that's a temporary thing. And after the first year, unless you keep making new things, people aren't going to come back. Two, I think they're, um, well, one, they can, sl- they can slash the prices down significantly, um, which they won't do. Um, the only other thing I can think of is retheme it to Classic Trilogy, and you might get a bunch of people coming in. But again, if it's the same price, you're still running into the, the cost barrier. If they if they retheme the whole effing land for original trilogy, or at least, you know, post OT or, with like Mandalorian and uh, they might have a better shot. Well, if they don't, even if they don't do the land, if they did the hotel, you yeah. feel like I'm not getting it in, in the Galaxy's Edge, but I'll get it in the hotel and I have to pay to go get it. And other thing that sells is classic or Mandalorian, nothing else is selling. Wouldn't it make the most sense to make the hotel classic trilogy or Mandalorian themed? Yeah, if you if you look, if you theme the Galactic Star Cruiser for original trilogy, because when people are thinking, oh, this is going to be a Star Wars hotel, they're going to be like, where's Darth Vader? Mm-hmm. Where's, you know, where's Han Solo? Uh, they've got Chewbacca, but, you know, whatever. That's what people want. That's what they wanted with this whole land. It wasn't hard to get this right. That's what they wanted with the sequel trilogy. <laughs> That's what they wanted with the sequel trilogy. If if Galaxy's Edge and the attractions had base, been based on the original trilogy, it would have been a slam dunk, home run. Like, it would have been a hell of a lot better received, I think, even than the Wizarding World if they did it right and they just... Right, I guess that, yeah. And I mean, like, what you're seeing that sells is classic trilogy or Mandalorian. That's it. And if they even they didn't do the whole, if they didn't do the, the Galaxy's Edge, if they'd done the Star Cruiser that way, I mean, I personally like to see Galaxy's Edge be changed. But you you have a paywall for classic trilogy. People are going to pay it. If you can go on there and see Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, lightsaber fighting, and all this other yeah. shit, people would pay for that. They, well, didn't they have Darth Vader? Didn't they have him at uh, Hollywood yeah, Studios yeah. at one time? The Galaxy's Edge, and, and people went nuts. They had they like a nuts. limited time, you know, he was there. That's and now they they're bringing want. the Mandalorian, but it's only California, because that's what people want. They don't want your shitty 
Disney sequel trilogy. No, Disney keeps trying to make Ray happen. Did you not see my video? Rose and rows and rows of Ray with dust on them. Well, they have they have Holdos too. And the thing is, now they're trying to put Holdo as a big thing in the comics. I think again, like they're just trying so hard to make these characters stick, but people just hate them. This was yesterday. Yesterday, there are Force Awakens action figures rotting. At Ollie's, they've been there for years. I know they dumped a bunch of uh, Last Jedi Rays off. And they're all Ray. And here's Every the thing. single one of them. They could have had characters people liked. I mean, they could have yeah. been very likable characters, but the choices they made uh, towards the original cast and towards what the, the storylines of these characters were shitty. And people don't, and, and you know, a lot of people didn't like them. Like they ended up being insufferable. And people were like, I can't, I, I know. No, no. So uh, good luck with that. I mean, again, if you guys are really. Uh, focused on business and, and pivoting back to profit, the smartest thing you could do is retheme all of the Star Wars uh, Galaxy's Edge, retheme it for original trilogy. That is mm -hmm. always evergreen, bankable. It uh, doesn't matter what Kathleen Kennedy wants. I can't believe that they, they listen to her in this regard. Are they still running original trilogy stuff on Star Tours? Yeah. Okay, so people, cause, like our kids love to go to Star Tours, I love Star but Wars. they don't like the Falcon. They yeah. like the they like the ship and they like to look at the tour of the ship, but they don't actually like the ride. Like they don't want to ride it again. They don't want to ride Rise of Resistance no again. Interest. Like yeah. we're gonna have like the Hollywood Studios is a horrible to get on anything. Our family at this point, we're not even gonna go to Galaxy's Edge. We're gonna go ride everything else and probably be done in an hour because everybody's in Star Wars. I don't even care about Gal. I don't even care if I go to Galaxy's Edge at all. I mean, and, and here's the thing: like I don't even like Avatar the movie. But I would rather spend time in Pandora and actually Flight of Passage is one of my favorite rides in all of Disney World. Yeah, that's true. It's uh, Squid Kings too. And I don't even like the movie, but I like the ride. And I like the immersion. And I think they honestly did a better job with Pandora than they did with Galaxy's Edge. And we're talking, this is freaking Star Wars. This should have gotten top I agree. shelf. I agree, because in Pandora, they have all these amazing lighted effects and everything else and all these like wildlife and different things that make you feel really immersed. And Galaxy's Edge has that to a point, but the whole backside, when you're going into, into the Star Cruiser, it's unfinished. So you know when you're driving behind Galaxy's Edge and you see all that stuff like on the metal spikes is unfinished? That's the view you get when you drive into to the Star Cruiser. When you're driving in, all oh, the, the backside, you get to the backside of, of, of... Water? Yeah. And um, they didn't, it isn't like to the same level, I don't think. I mean, in some ways it is, they have the Falcon there and stuff, but I mean, I don't know, I just think the Avatar feels... I don't know, it just feels more authentic to me. Yeah, it does. It feels like they cared more. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Avatar, they're basing it on a real place. Star Galaxy's Edge made up their own place just for the theme park instead of basing it on a place people understand and know. Well, and it's fleshed it. out. That's it. It's fleshed out. They had references. It's like, okay, another random desert planet in Star Wars. Wow, we've never seen a desert planet in Star Wars before. But it's not Tatooine. It's not Geonosis. It's, it's not Jakku. It's another one. It's yeah. like, what? All right, we're going to wrap this yep. up. All right, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.